nostalgia. An emotion that affects all of us for better or for worse. It can make you happy reminiscing about times gone by, or it can make you feel sad for days gone by. In either case, the nostalgia's intensity correlates with two things most of the time. How much of an impact that thing had on you and how long it's been since you last came back to it. A big part of nostalgia is forgetting about a show or game, and then having a blast of recollection all at once. Unfortunately though, at the moment, I've kind of been running out of childhood games to replay. Well, say if you've replayed so much that they don't really have much of an impact on me anymore, or I didn't play it or like it enough for it to leave an impact on me. Except for one. A game that I played for hundreds upon hundreds of hours, loving every second of it. And one that I haven't so much as touched in over five years, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Now, I've never really been one for sims and games similar to them, with no exact goal per se, preferring platformers or RPGs. However, there is just something special about New Leaf that was not only able to draw me in, but keep me hooked for almost two years. And since I've been feeling nothing but dead inside this whole year, I see no better time to revisit New Leaf and share everything I love about it with all of you. An intro like that is enough to make my stress melt. Even before I saw the title screen again, this tune was perfectly ingrained into my memory, even after five years without hearing it. It's definitely one of the most relaxing video game title screens of all time, that's for sure. The first to greet us after creating a new save file is none other than Rover. And now that I'm a little bit older, I can kind of see why everyone thinks he's kind of creepy. Well, maybe not creepy, but it's a little weird that he sits by you without asking first and asks so many personal questions. When arriving in your town, you immediately get swarmed by the local villagers and a new character, Isabel. They think you're the new mayor of town, and without a say in a matter, you become the mayor. More on that later, though. Despite being the mayor, you're pretty much on your own when it comes to housing, having to rely on none other than Tom Nook. Thankfully, for a first, you don't have to work for him, and even get to choose where he wants your home to be in town. This was a great and much needed change, because while I do love the games before this, uh, having to spend the first hour doing chores for Nook is kind of annoying. Once you get settled in, it's time to get into the regular Animal Crossing routine, hanging out with other villagers, earning bells, collecting stuff, and some other fun bonus content here and there. Starting with my villagers, I got a pretty alright batch, including some fan favorites like Goldie. She has something called a normal type personality, meaning she's sweet, patient, all that good stuff. Out of the hundreds and hundreds of villagers that have existed across the franchise, they all fall into one of eight personality types. Previously six, but this game introduced two new ones, and conveniently, I got at least one of each for this video, which I'm pretty sure that happens normally anyway, but... Uh, anyway, after the cheery but passive normals, there's the upbeat and hyper peppy characters, and in my town now is Anacati. Snooty villagers are, well, snooty, although they get quite a bit nicer in New Leaf compared to the previous games, and I got Sylvia. Lazy villagers are always hungry, but some of the nicest and most caring, and for my town I got Poppy. On the polar opposite side, cranky villagers are some of the most aggressive and rude, yet like the snooties though, they become a lot less so here. And for my cranky, I got Croak. Even got a villager I had during my first playthrough of this game, Rip It. He's a jock, and they always talk about sports and working out and stuff like that. On top of that, I got yet another jock. Buck, who didn't really move into my town until like the last week of my playthrough, so I really never formed a bond with him or anything. And there's the new villager types added in New Leaf. Sisterly and Smug. For Sisterly, I got Elise. And for Smug, I got Beardo. Both types are a mix of chill and sarcastic. One villager though I have a very, very weird relationship with is Maple. She's a normal bear cub, and there's not really much else to her, but for some reason, I really hated her, apparently, or something. It's, it's odd though, because I remember really liking her, but just look at all these odd screenshots I took of me, like hitting her with my net and pushing her into pitfalls, and frankly, just, just abusing her. I even made this weird comic where she's like sinking into a pitfall, 
but I refused to rescue her because she gave me a toilet or something. I really don't remember. Also, looking at all of this has unlocked some more memories of me in history class, learning about very dark subject matters like slavery, and like coming up with scenarios where my town was like attacked by like the Romans and everyone was forced into slavery or something. And I don't, I don't quite remember honestly, but my conclusion is that I was a very disturbed individual when I was like 14. While I absolutely love New Horizons, overall, villagers have more personality and charm in this game. For one, there's a ton of different dialogue, and everyone in town comments on different ongoing events. Citizens move around to various places as well. Sometimes they'll be outside or in their houses, while other times they might be hanging out in local shops. Such a huge amount of variety in how a player can interact with their townsfolk keeps things fresh for a while. Additionally, are all the favors they ask for, which range from simple ones like getting fruit for them or catching a bug they want to more intimate tasks, like going over to their house to hang out. Also, there's a massive amount of certain events that I wasn't able to experience in my short time playing this game for this video, so it's a good thing I took screenshots of most of them from when I was a kid. Birthdays are probably my favorite. Each villager has one, and you, alongside some other people in town, go over to their house and give them a gift and a party. Even better is that when it's your birthday, you get a party too. The whole mechanic is just really wholesome, and I really wish I would have lied about my birthday to Isabel so I could have a party now. Well, not a villager herself, I have to say that I love Isabel. She's adorable, and I don't even mean that in, in that having a thing for her kind of way. I literally mean I just find her very cute. She's the best secretary a politician could ask for. She's sweet, caring, works hard, does literally all the actual paperwork and bureaucratic stuff, whatever that word is that I can't pronounce because I suck and I have speech problems, but she's just the perfect person, especially when it comes to taking the fall when all the corrupt and immoral things your administration has done comes to light. Like the rest of the series, there's quite a few activities that you can partake in the past of time, as well as earn money, like fishing, catching bugs, or finding fossils. Fossils are the best way to make money by far, though, selling for thousands of bells. Every day, four spawn in your town, and you can dig them up with a shovel, then take them to blavers in the local museum to assess them, then sell them. Another way to earn money is to hit rocks. Every day, there'll be some random stone that has a gemstone inside, and another one can be hit repeatedly with a shovel to earn thousands of bells. Or there's the good old-fashioned collecting and selling fruits. But even then, there are more ways to get free stuff. Occasionally, these balloons with presents float high across the sky, uh, usually furniture, and if you use a slingshot, you can get it. Or you can shake trees to find furniture, although that might actually turn out pretty bad sometimes. With your newfound wealth, you can do lots of things, like expand your house with multiple new rooms, floors, and expanded floor space. Or you can visit some of the local shops around town, most of them being separated from the rest of the city on Main Street. Retail is a very interesting shop. It's a place where you usually sell random stuff since it's closer to the rest of the town and pay a lot more. Additionally, I also love the two running the store, Reese and Cyrus. They're a cute couple. Reese is sweet, but Cyrus is a bit too insecure. I mean, come on, dude. The, the two of you never leave this store, so I'm pretty, su I'm pretty sure you're gonna know if your wife cheats on you. Nook now owns his own real estate shop, and the ones running his store are his nephews, Timmy and Tommy. I like them, since Nook comes off as kind of a smug prick, slash is a smug prick. Like always, the more bells you spend, the bigger the store gets, and the more stuff and items it sells. One item in particular is pretty cool, fortune cookies. Every day, the player can buy these cookies and get a fortune. If you give the fortune back, you're gifted the Nintendo-themed item most of the time. This right here, while it might not sound like much, is one of the reasons why I love this game so much. I really wanted to fill my house with this stuff. You know, fire flowers, super mushrooms, etc. Unfortunately though, I spent the majority of my playthrough in December, where, where the shop sells these glow sticks in the place of cookies most days. And for me, that was practically every single day. 
What sucks even more is that some of these prizes, like the new 3DS, unlock mini games, which I hear are a lot of fun. I wanted to get to play, but no. Timmy and Tommy had to sell glow sticks almost every single day. It's also worth mentioning that to buy the cookies instead of bells, you have to pay with play coins, which can be earned by walking, but I feel kind of scared leaving the house with a console that goes for like 200 bucks in my pocket. And it's not to mention, um, like, all it being capture modded and all the DLC and stuff I have on it, so the, the 3DS right here is kind of irreplaceable. Uh, otherwise, I would have earned like 300 play coins with all the walking I do in my daily life. Moving on, we have the museum, which I will admit I kind of neglected. If you so wish, you can donate fossils, bugs, fish, and works of art and have them displayed. However, I really needed money and instead sold pretty much everything at the time. Eventually, you can unlock a second floor, which sells some neat items and stuff, so that's pretty cool. Next, there's the Dream Suit. A place where players can go online and visit the towns of other players, albeit with some restrictions. Isabel's brother Digby runs another online service, the Happy Home Showcase. Here, players can show their home designs of other players. Only, it uses Street Pass, and since I live out in the middle of nowhere, and this game is like 10 years old, I didn't find anyone to interact with. It is too bad though that both of these modes are going to be lost forever when the 3DS Wi-Fi service is shut down in a few months. And the last location I care about is Club LOL. Here during the day you can hear Dr. Shrunk's jokes and fill out a joke book, which you can later use to emote. While at night KK Slider throws on a show. The rest of the shops I really don't care too much about. There is a garden shop, the Able Sisters clothing shops, a shoe shop, and a hair salon. I mean, it's cool that there's a lot of options for things to customize, but again, I really don't care. By the docks, you can find Cap'n, and he can take the player to Tottenmore Island, where you can play fun activities, and more importantly, make big bucks by either scuba diving or fishing up rare fish that sell for a lot of bells. Or the fastest way to collect money in this game, catch these bugs, which can land you hundreds of thousands of bells in under an hour. And as a bonus, it's one of the few places that isn't directly affected by seasons. Now let's get to the big mechanic and selling point of New Leaf. Your job as mayor. Which isn't too big to be honest. Yeah, disappointing I know. You get to set ordinances, or you know, whatever that word is, because again, I have a hard time saying that. You know, basically, laws to make shops open either earlier or later, among other minor things, and set up public work projects. These include a number of neat things, from constructing bridges, some new shops, or useless landmarks. These cost a lot of bells to construct, however, villagers over time will slowly donate to help pay some of the cost, and by some, I mean like less than 1% of the total cost. My ultimate favorite is the Roost a cafe with a very relaxing vibe. Here, the player can order coffee to drink and eventually even work at the cafe themselves if they so wish. In 2017, New Leaf would get a massive update called Welcome Amiibo, going so far to even change the official name of the game from just Animal Crossing New Leaf to Animal Crossing New Leaf Welcome Amiibo. An update of this scale is kind of odd in retrospect, uh, since while a lot of games do get major updates all the time, 3DS games got very minor ones most of the time. And on top of that, this update came out almost 5 years after the game's original release, and right at the end of the console's lifespan too. As you can guess, in this version, amiibo play a big role. There are various villager amiibo cards released, and you can use them to get the villagers you want to move into your town. And yeah, the cards I own, are, they're all bootlegs, I'll admit. This is a fantastic feature for so many reasons. One, it becomes a lot easier to get the villagers you want to move into your town, as instead of having to do countless restarts until you get a roster you're satisfied with, you can just spend a few extra bucks on eBay, get some cards, and have your village exactly what you want it to be. Two, it gives a whole new use to all the Animal Crossing amiibo that Amiibo Festival and Happy Home Designer put into circulation. And three, it's a cool callback to the e-reader. 
If you have a big feature Welcome Amiibo added, is a campsite, where certain event characters show up each day, and you can buy special furniture. Speaking of which, that was one part of the game that I wasn't able to experience for this video. All the seasonal events and holidays. I really love this game, but I didn't want to play it for a whole year again just for this video. And some of the few that I was around for, I messed up, like with Thanksgiving. So the only major holiday I experienced in full was Christmas, or Toy Day as it's called. Which at the very least, was quite a bit of fun. Honestly, there's not too much else to talk about when it comes to gameplay. The rest of the fun comes from mundane things. Just talking to villagers, coming back each day, and making little bits of progress. I think another thing I love about Animal Crossing games, and specifically this one, are all the memories you gain playing other games alongside it. Again, I played New Leaf for almost two years, so I played through Majora's Mask twice, Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, New Super Mario Bros. 2 twice, Super Mario Maker for a 3DS, Triforce Heroes, Donkey Kong Country Returns, Pokemon Red and Blue like twice, Pokemon Gold, Wind Waker twice, Luigi's Mansion like three times, Pac-Man World 2, Hey Pikmin, Mario & Luigi Dream Team, Super Smash Bros. Melee, Wario Land Shake It, Thousand Year Door twice, Twilight Princess, Super Mario RPG, Super Mario Sunshine, Mario for Prime, and even a little bit of the OG Animal Crossing on the GameCube while still spending like an hour or so a day playing New Leaf to the side. It feels good to play something time consuming or stressful, even unwinding with something simple and relaxing. This game is just a really good stress reliever, and there's so many times where I've gone for stressful episodes in life, and this game has made things at least a little bit better. All that's really left to talk about now are personal experiences and other unique aspects of my town. Like my house. I didn't get all the upgrades, yet I did add a new room, basement, and attic. The first floor is just a mess of random stuff. The side room is Christmas themed, the basement is Halloween themed, and the attic is Nintendo themed. I'm not exactly the greatest room designer to say the least, yet over time the plays really started to come together to become something nice. Sometimes, for sheer luck, a tree drops a perfect fruit which sells for six times more than its normal counterpart. Plant it, multiply it, and fill your town with these trees. You got yourself a lot more bells daily. Eventually, these trees will die and leave rotten fruit, so be sure to save back a few fruits just in case. Also, villagers can still be given the rotten fruit when asked for a snack, which I find kind of funny. Yeah, I know, I'm sick in the head. Villagers moving out has got to be one of the most gut-wrenching feelings in gaming. Having someone you've known for years just leave forever without saying a word beforehand is depressing, even if it is just a game. What ultimately led me to quit my two-year-long streak was one single event. A villager named Hamfrey had been in my town since the beginning and eventually moved out one day. And right at that moment, I shut the game off and never came back. Now, my interest had been waning for a while at that point to be frank, and even if he hadn't moved out, I bet I would have stopped playing eventually anyway. This event was just a final straw. Unlike in Wild World, once villagers pack up their boxes, there's no convincing them to change your minds about moving, so pay attention and talk to your villagers. Most of the time, if they have a strong bond with the player, they'll tell them about their plans to move out weeks ahead of time, and can be convinced to stay. And on the bright side, I did not have a single villager move out on me during this playthrough, so yay. And that was Animal Crossing New Leaf. By far my favorite 3DS game and Animal Crossing game of all time. It's a fun game to pass the time with and for the past month has been the highlight of my day. Although I don't think I'm going to continue playing after making this video. Well without a doubt I had fun for the first two weeks, I'm starting to get a bit tired of playing it. There as well uh, is also a lot of things, and I mean a lot of things, that I kind of glossed over or skipped over in this video. Uh, but I doubt anyone would want to sit through a whole hour-long video of me rambling, so I just wanted to talk about the things that I liked the most about this game, or things I thought stand out the most about it. Anyway, check this game out if you haven't already, and maybe if you all want, I can make another video about another Animal Crossing game next year. 
Anyway, thank you all for watching, and I wish you all a happy new year.